Hi everybody, morning and welcome to our Sunday Club! My name is Serena and I wonder, can you shout out your name really loud so I can hear it in my house? One, two, three, go! Fantastic! Great to know that you are watching. You are very, very welcome. So last week we started to think a little bit about the story of Christmas. And we learnt that we were in a season called Advent. And we thought a bit about what Advent was. It's a time when we think about Jesus coming to earth and we get ready to welcome him. And last week we thought a bit about the start of the Christmas story and a couple called Mary and Joseph, who were a young couple who got told big news by an angel that Mary was going to give birth to the saviour of the world whose name was going to be Jesus. And we heard that they were scared and they couldn't believe the news, but they trusted God and they started their journey because they trusted God. And this week we're gonna continue hearing what happens next in our story. But first of all, we need to have another look at my big advent calendar. I showed you this last week, hopefully you can see it. You can see there are lots of different numbers on there. I wonder, can you tell me which number we are on today? That's right, we are number 13. And you can see here is pocket number 13. So shall we see what's inside and what it can teach us about our story? Let's have a look. Oh, oh, what's this? Can you see what that is? Very interesting. To me, it looks like a present. And I wonder whether you've got lots of presents under your tree. I'm looking at my tree now and I can see there are lots of presents under there that I've wrapped for other people. So a present. I wonder why that's in my calendar and what that can teach us about the Christmas story. Well, some might say that Jesus was the best gift that anybody could receive, that anybody could receive today. And that's true. Jesus was a gift from God to Mary so that he could be a gift to everybody who lived after Mary and before, in fact. Jesus is the bestest gift we can have at Christmas and knowing him and having him as our friend. So let's read a bit more of our story. If you remember last week, we started our story and it was called A Very Special Star. And we finished just at the point that Mary and Joseph were on their long journey on their donkey. Let's pick up where we left off. And then I looked up and saw the star. I knew at once that it was a very special star. I knew too that Mary's baby was a very special baby and that I must forget my saw hooves and carry them to Bethlehem as quickly as I could. Remember the donkey is telling this story. I wanted Joseph to look up and see the star too. I butted him gently with my head. What is it my little donkey? he asked. Have I tied the bundle too tight? He ran his fingers gently under the straps. I thought perhaps it doesn't matter that he hasn't seen the star. Perhaps the star is not meant to be as a sign for Joseph, but as a sign for someone else. I wondered who it could be. So here they are on their journey. You can see it's a very long road. Let's see what happens next. Here we are, can you see Mary and Joseph there? They're just coming in to Bethlehem on their donkey. Early next morning, we came to Bethlehem. As soon as we entered the town, my nostrils caught a thousand scents and my ears a thousand sounds. The streets were narrow, so narrow and so filled with people and animals that we could neither move forwards nor back. Joseph, I heard Mary murmur, and I knew from her voice that she felt scared. People were budging her on either side. I felt her being pushed first this way and then that. 
I filled my lungs with air and let out a great bray. My donkey, said Joseph. And his voice told me that he was both surprised and amused. The crowd about us was certainly surprised, for it parted and I trotted through. We went about the town but could find nowhere for Mary and Joseph to stay. Every inn was packed with travellers, come to pay their taxes. At last an innkeeper took pity on us. There is only my stable where my cattle sleep, he told us but you are welcome to stay there. It was a nice little stable. The roof was low and the walls were of stone. Two cows with great gentle eyes stared at us. Their calves moved closer to their sides, but I don't think that they were afraid of us. You can see here, Joseph speaking to the innkeeper and Mary's on her donkey. At least we were all together, said Joseph. He and Mary settled themselves on the straw and went to sleep. But, but despite the long journey, I felt wide awake. Outside, the city had fallen silent. I went out but could see nothing, only the black shape of the buildings around and above my head, the great star. Here you can see Mary and Joseph in the stable and the donkey and that's where our story ends today and we will finish it up in a couple of weeks time when we think about what happens next in that stable someone very important is born and he is going to be the light of the world just like the light from that star shone so that people could see it and know that something good was about to happen Jesus was going to be born and he would be a light, like a star, to the people around him so that they would look at him and know that something good was happening. Now we're going to do some singing and some dancing. So hopefully you've got a bit of space at home to stand up and join in with the actions to some of these songs. Hopefully you know some of the actions by now because we've done them at church before so let's join in together
singing and dancing you are great at that now we are going to think a little bit more about light and we're going to do some praying together so here I have a special Christmas ornament it's a bit like Luke Shaw's snowy if you saw Luke Shaw showing off snowy at church last week because snowy was a snowman but he was very special because inside snowy you could put a candle and when that candle was lit snowy would light up well this tree is very much the same it's got space for a candle so that when the candle shines the whole tree glows and looks really beautiful what i want you to do is pause this video here um and whilst you've paused it i want you to go and find a candle and when you found that candle i want you to make sure there's an adult with you to help you light it because i'm grown up and i can light my old my own candle but you need someone to help you so please do not light your candle unless you have an adult so pause the video here and then come back with your candle fantastic hopefully you have a candle i've got one here and I'm going to light my candle and put it inside of my Christmas tree and we'll see what happens. It looks very beautiful. And you can start lighting your candle with your grown up now too. Okay, so my candle is lit and here is my Christmas tree and it's going to go inside and light it up. Can you see how that starts to glow as the light hits it? It's very beautiful. And now what I want to do is I want us to look at our light that we've lit. And maybe if we don't have something like a candle, maybe we could turn on some fairy lights. I've got some lights behind me. Maybe you want to look at those if you don't have any lights. But I just want you to look at a light. And then I want you to think about something, maybe something that is scaring you or feels dark at the moment maybe someone you know has been poorly recently and you've been worried about them maybe you're worried about Christmas everybody else seems really excited but you're just a little bit worried about it I just want you to think of something you'd like Jesus to help you with and do you remember when I said Jesus was the light of the world so when we look at our lights, maybe our Christmas tree lights so our candle or these lights behind me, I want you to think about Jesus. That no matter what's worrying you, no matter how dark it is, Jesus can light it up. And we're going to ask him to light up the things that are worrying us whilst we look at our lights. So I'm going to say a prayer and then if you want the same thing, you can just say Amen at the end. Amen just means you agree. So if you agree with my prayer, say Amen. If you don't, don't say Amen. But what I'm going to do is pray whilst looking at my candle. Maybe you want to say something to Jesus too whilst I do that. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you are the light of the world and that no matter how big and dark and scary things are, that you can light them up. And I pray for all of us now watching that we would know your light and your love this Christmas time. 
Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of the week. And we'll see you hopefully next week for Children's Christmas Praise. And at Children's Christmas Praise, there's going to be lots of children and young people involved in our service. So make sure to come along with your parents or to watch online. We really look forward to seeing you and to learning more about the story of Jesus, the light of the world, this Christmas. God bless everyone. Bye.